so good. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Wagyu katsu sandwich, aka the most expensive sandwich in the world. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. There's a lot of misinformation out there about Wagyu. So I want to start by clearing a few things up. The first thing is that Wagyu isn't a breed of cattle. It just means Japanese beef in Japanese. The second thing is that you hear terms like Kobe, Matsuzaka, Miyazaki thrown around a lot, but these aren't breeds of cattle either. They're just the names of locations in Japan where the cattle were raised. So calling beef raised in Montana Kobe beef is kind of like calling strawberries grown in New York California strawberries. I'm going to write a detailed post about Wagyu, including how the grading scale works. So if you want to know more, head down and click the link in the description below. But for now, let's get back to our sandwich. This is A5 grade Wagyu sirloin. The A rank represents the yield, and the 5 is the highest score on the scale, determined by the marbling, color, texture, and quality of the fat. It may look like a ton of fat, but Japanese beef has a significantly higher ratio of monounsaturated fat and oleic acid relative to saturated fat compared to other kinds of beef. Since both of these have a low melting temperature, the fat will melt in your mouth like butter. There's also no gristle or sinew, which makes these steaks as tender as a hamburger. That's important for a sandwich because you want to be able to bite cleanly through it. This is probably why most steak sandwiches involve thin slices of beef rather than a whole steak. These steaks are about 3 quarters of an inch thick and I've trimmed them so they're about the size of my bread. Speaking of bread, we need the right one to pair with our Wagyu and I like using a thick cut shokupan or Japanese sandwich bread. It's light and bouncy, which makes it seem fluffy. But when you tear it, it provides some good resistance, which gives it a solid springy texture that holds up to the thick slab of meat. To make the katsu, we're going to need a quarter teaspoon of sea salt and black pepper, two tablespoons of flour, one large egg, and about a cup of panko. Panko literally means bread powder in Japanese, and it's not ground as finely as western breadcrumbs. This gives the food you coat it with a light crispy texture that stays that way long after you've fried it. If you can't find it, you can make it by removing the crusts of sandwich bread and pulsing it in a food processor. Finally, for the katsu sauce, we're going to be using a quarter cup of sake, one teaspoon of coarsely ground black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two tablespoons of mild honey, a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoons of ketchup, a tablespoon of oyster sauce, and one tablespoon of whole grain mustard. To make the sauce, I'm going to add the sake, honey, black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder to a small saucepan. Then I'm going to stir that up and put the pan over medium-high heat. We're going to bring that to a full boil, and once the bubbles start getting big and shiny, I'm going to add the Worcestershire sauce, oyster sauce, ketchup, and mustard. Bring that mixture to a boil to thicken it up, and then I'm going to remove it from the heat. Your sauce should end up looking something like this. For the katsu, you want to break the egg into a flat bowl or deep plate and beat it until it's smooth and uniform in color. Let's go ahead and generously season both sides of the beef with salt and pepper. The sauce is more tangy and sweet than salty, so it's important to season the steaks well here. 
make sure you're using cold steaks that are straight out of the fridge. Otherwise, you run the risk of overcooking them, and that would just be tragic. Now I'm gonna dust every surface with flour. It's important to get a thin, even coating of flour on every bit of the meat. If you miss spots, the panko won't stick, and if you get the flour too thick, the breading's gonna buckle up after it's been fried. To coat the beef, dust off any excess flour and dip it in the egg. Be sure you get the whole thing coated here, or you're gonna end up with bald spots. Now you're gonna put the beef into the tray with the panko and start covering it. I usually switch hands at this point, or you're gonna end up coating your fingers in the process. Aside from rolling it around in the breadcrumbs, you can also pile some panko on top and give it some gentle pats to press it into all those nooks and crannies. Your coated cutlets should end up looking something like this. Before we start frying the katsu, be sure to get your bread into the toaster. While that's toasting, I'm gonna fill a heavy bottom pot with an inch and a half of vegetable oil and heat it to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius. This is a lot hotter than normal because you want the breading to crisp and brown as quickly as possible. The rest of this is gonna go pretty fast, so pay attention. When the oil is up to temp, lower a cutlet into the oil. Then I start my stopwatch. Now we're gonna let this fry until the panko sets. Don't move it around just yet, or it's gonna cause the breading to fall off. You can see how quickly that's taking on color. And when it's light brown like this, I'm gonna flip it over once. Then we just need to let this fry until the gyukatsu is uniformly golden. About another 30 seconds. Okay, it's been about a minute, and look how golden brown our cutlet has gotten. Let's get this out of the oil and onto a wire rack to drain. Then I'm gonna drizzle a generous dose of that katsu sauce all over the cutlet. Don't be stingy here. You wanna make sure you've got the cutlet good and covered with the sauce. Now we just need to flip it over and get the other side. If you're wondering what the difference is between this and my tonkatsu sauce, I've made this one tangier and sweeter to balance the richness of the beef, and it's spicier thanks to the black pepper and mustard. I'll bet you're thinking this looks pretty darn good already, and you'd be right, but slow your roll, cause it's about to get even better. Our bread's lightly toasted and ready to go, so let's get it onto our board and put this thing together. Then, we're gonna top that with our Wagyu Katsu. Let's close her up and give it a gentle press to help bind everything together. To finish off this sandwich, I'm gonna trim off the crusts. Honestly, if it were just me, I'd leave them on because they're tasty AF. But we're doing this Japanese style and those crusts are gonna give me something to munch on while I finish the shoot. Okay, let's cut that in half. Are you ready for this? Now that's a steak sandwich. Throw some chips on there, and we're good to go. Although it's thick and rare, you could literally take a bite of this sandwich without any teeth. And yet it's one of those things where the more you chew, the more you're rewarded by the flavors and textures of the sandwich. The beef is savory and rich, yet the fat isn't heavy or cloying. The breading is crisp, despite being saturated with that tangy peppery sauce. And the bread provides just enough bouncy texture and a balancing sweetness to bring the whole thing together. There are a lot of sandwiches that I love from around the world, but when I'm craving meat, there's no other sandwich I'd rather have. So, 
I know this isn't exactly an everyday meal, but if you can find A5 grade Japanese beef, this Wagyu katsu sandwich is a splurge that I encourage you to try at least once. If you can't find it, I also have a recipe for a more affordable tonkatsu sandwich which is made with pork, so stick around to the end screen for a link to that. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all the beef lovers that you know. As always, I want to thank my amazing patrons on Patreon for helping to support this video. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help support our future videos. Well, I'm off to go devour this Wagyu Katsusando, but I'll catch you in the next one. Check us out on Instagram at No Recipes. Okay, I've been waiting for this moment all day. I think this is the best thing I've put in my mouth all year, maybe all decade. Hang on just a second. Ha, ha, ha.